Hey, shalom everyone. That's, this is Amir Tsarfati. I'm back in Israel, back in Galilee. I'm in my office here. This is a very important, special update. I wasn't planning on giving it, but uh, there's a lot of stuff that is going on right now. And I think you should know. And I think that uh, some of it might even encourage you. Uh, so um, why don't I, first of all, I want to see where you guys are from. I see on the chat. I see people from Switzerland and from South Africa and from the Netherlands and people also uh, from Australia, New Zealand, uh, from the U.S., of course, all across Canada uh, is here in the house. Um, any more countries? Uh, let me see. Yeah, I know Texas thinks it's a different country. Norway is in the house. Um, yeah. Beautiful. Bahamas, um, Sweden is in the house. Beautiful. Okay, so listen, let me pray. And uh, this is where I'm asking you right now, press the share button because you really want to share these news, okay? Father, I thank you for your word. Your word is, uh, is true. And we ask that you will sanctify us by this truth. Uh, Lord, we don't want to look into world events uh, from a just bystander's perspective. We want to look at it from uh, the perspective of your word and your promises. And we thank you uh, for giving us the Holy Spirit that is not only the comforter, uh, but also the spirit of truth that brings us to understand the truth. In this age and era of so much disinformation, misinformation, and fake news, we thank you that we can see things as they are through your word. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. So shalom, everyone. It's Amir Tsarfati. I see that the chat is exploding on YouTube, Facebook, and Twitter. Um, so listen, we're going to talk about three topics, okay? Three topics. Super, super, super important, okay? First topic. Listen to this. First topic is that the Israeli foreign minister right now is in Azerbaijan and he's about to fly to Turkmenistan to open its uh, Israeli um, embassy. And we're talking about uh, 15 miles away from Iran. Uh, the Israeli foreign minister is going to be there. Pay attention that unlike Iran that is uh, plotting with different proxies around Israel, Israel is actually creating relations with countries, countries that are not just a proxy terrorist organization, countries with armies and infrastructure. So we're talking about something very, very important. And I'll show you a map in a few seconds so you can understand what is it that causes Iran not to sleep well at night. The Ramadan is coming to an end tomorrow. And... Uh, then uh, towards the um, next week, we have the uh, Memorial Day here in Israel for the fallen soldiers that will be followed by the Independence Day. And once we're done with both, Israel is no longer bound to any um, industrial uh, quietness. I mean, we, we are uh, free to do what we need to do because uh, we will have all the time in the world to do it. I live in Galilee. I live right next to an airbase. The activity that I get to hear and I know is unprecedented. We're definitely practicing more than ever before. Now, let me show you something very, very interesting. Okay, so also I want to share with you that over a week ago, Senator Lindsey Graham from South Carolina, uh, made it to the Saudi palace in Riyadh and visited MBS, the Mohammed bin Salman, the crown prince, who is the strongest person in the kingdom, second to his father, the king, Salman, who is literally about to kick the bucket. He's very sick and very old, and he I don't think he even understands what's going on around him. Ladies and gentlemen, now let me tell you why a Republican senator arrived in Saudi Arabia. You would think that it makes no sense for the U.S. administration to send him. You're right. 
in a way, it's not the U.S. administration that sent him, but the U.S. administration was well aware of it and maybe even is ready to enjoy the benefit thereof. The Biden administration so far has a disastrous foreign um, uh, po- foreign success besides wars. It has nothing to present. Unlike um, the September of 2020, the Abraham Accords are uh, the last uh, major, major peace of treaties achieved in the world under the 45th president. So now, uh, you know, it would be interesting to see what's going on. I'll tell you exactly what uh, Lindsey Graham said and what MBS answered. We'll talk about it in a few seconds. But let me show you a map that might help you understand why the Iranians are more concerned than the Israelis about what can happen in the near future. Take a look at this. So remember, Israel just opened an embassy of Azerbaijan in Tel Aviv a few months ago. Israel is about to open today an embassy in Turkmenistan. So Azerbaijan, Azerbaijan, it's a Shiite Muslim country, and Turkmenistan. Take a look at this map, please. I want you to see. This is phenomenal. Take a look. So Azerbaijan, as you can see, is up above Tehran, above on the western part of the Caspian Sea. Turkmenistan is on the eastern part of the Caspian Sea. There are the Iraqis in northern Iraq, Kurdistan, where there is definitely Israeli presence there. We have peace with Bahrain and the United Arab Emirates. Oman allows us to fly above their territory. And if we will have any deal with Saudi Arabia, take a look at how Iran is actually surrounded and not as much Israel. See, Israel is surrounded by proxies. We're not surrounded by countries that wants to destroy us. We're surrounded by terrorist organization that wants to destroy us. It's Iran that operates them. The commander of the Revolutionary Guard today, if you follow me on Telegram, listen, guys, let me tell you something. If you're not following me on Telegram, there is no way you can understand what's going on. This is where I give you the day-to-day, hour-after-hour events. Commander of, of the Iranian Revolutionary Guard just said today, He admitted, we are behind the rockets from Lebanon, Syria, and Gaza. The Iranians, they're using subcontractors. They're using Hamas here and Hezbollah there and the proxies in Syria. But but it's Iran that is orchestrating. Iran is the only country in the Middle East that wants to destroy Israel. It uses proxies. It's not using countries. So don't mix Psalm 83 that speaks about countries, which... I believe, took place in 1948 with Ezekiel 38 that speaks about countries which will take place in the near future. In between, it's a war that Israel has with predominantly proxies, operated, funded, and um, and, and, uh, ideologically uh, mentored by Iran. That's it. Iran is the only country. Now you can understand that while Iran is feeding proxies, Israel is tying ties with countries that have militaries, governments, parliaments, institutions, and infrastructures. That makes the Iranians very, very, very nervous. And we know that for a fact. So it's not like Israel is sitting there waiting for everybody to attack. No, we're working very, very hard. Now, let me let me explain a little bit of what Lindsey Graham said and what he heard. He came and basically said to the Saudis, guys, we're, we are here still, your main friends in the world, and we want to also give you, you know, we want to do business with you. We want to, you know, we want to upgrade our relationship. But if you guys want to upgrade your relationship with us, you must help and you must be in peace with the Jewish state, with Israel. This is what he said. Now, that's a very good friend of Israel, Republican senator. And he said it to MBS. He said, look, peace with Israel is what we think is what America needs to see. 
in order to upgrade its relationship with Saudi Arabia. By the way, that's the same Lindsey Graham that called MBS a murderer, and it's the same rep- Democratic uh, administration that didn't want to shake the hand of MBS, and now everybody is crawling to MBS because they know that now with China behind the scenes, the price of the Saudis is much higher. Now, watch this. Let me explain the three main points that the MBS told Lindsey Graham, and which, by the way, he took with him and came to Israel with. First of all, first of all, he said the following thing. Saudi Arabia wants some sort of a U.S. Um, security uh, agreement. Uh, the U.S. will ensure Saudi Arabia's security. Whether it's something like, uh, you know, you just, you, you just added to NATO, you just added um, Finland, and you're about to add Sweden because you think, you know, Russia is the big enemy. How about Iran as an enemy to us? You need to also help us. Give us some sort of an umbrella of NATO. It's the first thing. Second thing, free trade with America. America right now doesn't really need Saudi Arabia because America is exporting oil and gas. But Saudi Arabia wants business. And the third thing, ladies and gentlemen, is that the Saudis understand that they also need nuclear program. They want America to supply it and America to supervise it. Now, America knows if it, they're not going to do it, China, Russia, and Iran will gladly do it. Now, maybe Iran not, but China and Russia would. So you understand that it's within America's interest to be the one that builds it and supervises it. It's within America's interest also for this administration with this disastrous foreign uh, you know, policy, foreign affairs, to maybe, maybe present to the American public another peace treaty with Israel. And so think about it. The agreement between um, Saudi Arabia and Iran is not yet in effect. There's another couple of weeks, if I'm not mistaken. Second thing you want to know, one of the reasons Saudi Arabia wants to have a deal with China is because China is the biggest buyer now of, of Saudi Arabian oil. And uh, also they wanted quiet borders with the Houthis in Yemen and from other sides. But no place in the Saudi-Iranian agreement has some sort of stipulation that Saudi Arabia cannot have ties with Israel. So Saudi Arabia can actually use the agreement with Israel to ensure that Iran is not crossing the line because then they will use their Israeli connections. Ladies and gentlemen, what I'm trying to say is it's not black and white. It's not like either or. We know that now comes the Bible. We know that biblically, Sheba and Didan will protest the uh, Iranian-Turkish and Russian uh, uh, coalition that will come to attack Israel. Now, there is a war going on in Sudan right now between the current government, which is military, and the another general. By the way, those two generals have been fighting forever. This is not something new. But uh, one general decided that uh, another general is, is, uh, should be replaced, and now both generals have each their own forces. And if that's, if that's going to deteriorate to all-out uh, war, Iran might, of course, use it to um, arm one of the sides in order for it to win, and then Sudan will become a proxy of Iran as well. And Saudi Arabia understand that they cannot afford... uh, Look at the... uh, I don't know if you can see on the map. Saudi Arabia, and look at uh, Sudan across the Red Sea from Saudi Arabia. The Saudis don't want to have... Iranian proxies in Yemen in the south and in Sudan on the west. And of course, Iraq and Iran on the north and the northeast. So every country is now recalculating its steps in light of the new situation that is going on in the Middle East. And it's important that you understand that. Okay, it's very important that you understand that. Now I'm going to say this, folks. The next month is the most crucial 
in challenging months since the establishment of the State of Israel. I know it sounds bombastic. I'm, I'm not trying to sound bombastic or sensationalist. But I will tell you, everyone in Israel understands that. And the Iranians also understand that. And Hezbollah understands. They all understand that Israel, after the holidays, is free to strike if Israel decides it's time to do that. Lindsey Graham just said today, and I put that on Telegram, which I and I urge you to go to Telegram and follow me there. You're gonna see, we're gonna show you the link to it. But I on Telegram, I just I just posted the following thing. I said, Lindsey Graham just tweeted, Israel will not allow Iran to build a nuclear bomb. And look what he said, and we are just around the corner from a military conflict in the region. What Lindsey Graham heard from Benjamin Netanyahu is simple. Either you stop them or I stop them, and it has to happen now, right now. So um, basically the traveling of the Israeli foreign minister to Azerbaijan and Turkmenistan is part of the Israeli effort. Uh, Prime Minister traveled um, to Europe to prepare the European leaders uh, for sanctions against Iran and maybe even told them, if we are going to strike, you need to stay quiet because we're doing your job, basically. You know, Iran is definitely threatening the whole world, including you, and will do the dirty business of taking care of it. So, ladies and gentlemen, I just want you to know a lot is going on around, behind the scenes, and in front of the cameras. But I need you to know, it's not that Israel is sitting and waiting for the enemies to attack. Now, I will also say this, and it's important that you hear me out, because there's a lot of fake news going on all around. Okay, listen to this. When Nasrallah, the head of Hezbollah, said in his speech a few days ago, that Prime Minister Netanyahu, in his attack on Lebanon, didn't hit anything. Hezbollah leader lied. I know from my sources that there was a special commando operation in the depth of Lebanon that destroyed a very strategic target that is close to the heart of Nasrallah, and most of his own circle, closest circle, did not even know about it. Nasrallah knows about it. Folks, we've got people, even in Lebanon, we've got commando units operating, even as we speak right now. Hezbollah understands that. And this is exactly why they did not shoot any rockets anymore. They understood that they probably went a bit too far. The same goes in Syria. Israeli military dropped not only some bombs, but also leaflets above Syrian villages, warning them not to collaborate with Hezbollah, or else they will uh, see Israeli military um, operations there. A lot is going on right now. Iran understands that it is going to be surrounded. Let me again show you. First of all, that's Lindsey Graham visiting Mohammed bin Salman about nine days ago. And remember, that's an important visit because Saudi Arabia just strike a deal with Boeing based in South Carolina where they make the Dreamliners to buy over, I don't know, 30-something planes or billions of dollars worth of deal for the new airline that MBS is making, is creating, Riyadh Airlines, something like that. That is something that you do when you are signaling to a country that you're interested in, in business with them. The same goes with the allowing Israeli flights above Saudi and Oman. You don't do that unless you are signaling that it is something you're interested in. Ladies and gentlemen, there is going to be very interesting development in the near future. Please, please, please stay away from fake news. And uh, my Telegram channel um, I, I'm, I'm going to try and put um, a um, maybe a video that shows how you can actually, I don't know if I have it, but if not, 
Telegram channel. We'll post it on Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, Telegram, um, where you can actually press the link and join. Folks, tons of stuff, amazing development in Sudan, in Turkmenistan, in Azerbaijan, and of course in Lebanon and Syria. All of that is going on behind the scenes, in front of cameras, and we're, we're expecting the next month to be very, very, very crucial and challenging on all levels. And stay uh, tuned. Follow me on Telegram. I'll keep you posted. And remember again the reason why it's important that you understand that we're not watching Psalm 83 being fulfilled. This psalm was fulfilled in 1948 when all those countries that that psalm described came against Israel when Israel was just declared a state. They wanted to cut us off from being a nation that the name of Israel will be a member no more because the name of Israel was just declared on May 14. This time it's only Iran. Iran is the country and Iran is not Elam. Make no mistake, the prophecy of Elam has been fulfilled that place has been destroyed and it's gone. Elam was an ancient kingdom of a small portion of Iran of today. The prophecy regarding Iran is Iran is called Persia. It's Ezekiel 38. It's definitely around the corner. We might even see another brick up after the, 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 the Turks and after the uh, Iranians and the Russians even Sudan might fall into the hands of Iran. Now watch this. Maybe the last thing I will say before we will finish, and it's important. People are asking me, haven't you warmed up relationship with, with Turkey and Erdogan? Well, yes, Erdogan is going for elections. He's desperate. The inflation there is skyrocketing. He needs business with Israel. But Erdogan is a Muslim brotherhood, staunch, a very, very... Uh, hardcore um, Sunni Muslim that is is not a fan of Israel and and Erdogan is operating in Jerusalem. He's funding his Turkish people under the guise of uh, of uh, nonprofit uh, charity organizations. He's funding tourists from Turkey to come and populate the old city of Jerusalem, walk around the Temple Mount, keep the Turkish presence there. They purchased the restaurant. They purchased the youth hostel there in the old city, not from them, not far from the Western Wall. We know there is a heavy, heavy Turkish presence and Turkish funding of their government there to stir up the area and to keep it under Muslim, uh, you know, influence and certainly uh, not to allow any Jewish. Um, you know, sovereignty in the old city of Jerusalem. The, make no mistake, this is not something... I never bought this uh, sweet, sweet talk of Erdogan. Erdogan is not a friend of Israel, and when the time comes, when he, when everything will come together, he will show his true face. Look, I mean, I've seen even Israeli Arabs uh, who were on TV That's just uh, two weeks, a week and a half ago, when everything sounded so you know, dramatic. And Israeli Arabs, commentators on Israel TV said, when the time comes and when all the Muslims will come against Israel, will actually join the Muslims. Israeli Arabs that receive Israeli social security money and, and services from Israel as a Jewish state are admitting that when the time comes, when they have to choose, they'll actually join the Muslims and fight against Israel. So, Make no mistake, certainly Turkey, if that's what the Israeli Arabs say, how much more Turkey is into this Ottoman Empire dreams of becoming once again the leader of the Sunni world. Now, I will say this, don't be uh, too much impressed with the Saudi-Iranian um, you know, deal, only because I'll tell you this. If there is one thing that the Iranians hate more than Israel is they hate the Saudis. And there's one thing the Sunni Muslims hate more than Israel is the Shiite Muslims. Make no mistake, there is zero trust between the two. And that's why uh, Saudi is not in the pocket of Iran. They wanted a quiet border with the Houthis, and that's what they got now. They wanted good business with China, and that's what they got now. So the Saudis are very smart to 
cut their coupon with you know the, the things that they care about but at the same time if it comes I don't think they'll hesitate to have a normalization and deal with Israel simply because it'll serve their interests okay all right folks listen follow me on telegram it's super important very very crucial days ahead of us I would love to um, give you unfiltered unbiased uh, news and uh, stay in touch okay telegram Go to Amir Tsarfati. I've got 334,000 or 333,000 subscribers. The reason why I'm saying that, don't go to any other channel because all the other channels with my name are fake. Many times those channels are actually using, They think you think you're talking to me. They send you messages with cryptocurrency advices and, and links to buy stuff. That's not me. I don't do that. I don't give you any financial advices. So please make sure the only channel on Telegram you follow with my name is the one with over 330,000 subscribers because that's the authentic one, okay? Listen, thank you. God bless you. And please share this with as many